Honorable Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Mr. Arunaba Ghosh, distinguished participants of today's workshop, ladies and gentlemen. The presentation has set the tone for the discussions for today. And I have been looking at the panel and the constituents and the topics that are being taken up. This could not be a more opportune moment to talk about cooling, coming as it does in the middle of record heat in the country. And globally, the concern that has been flagged by in the latest IPCC report, where the time, the crisis, and the need to act now has been underscored in as big a way as it has ever been. So we really have to talk about what we need to do and how we will go about it. The key issue that I would like to mention very briefly as my thoughts that I want to share as part of the discussion today is the need for working in the, let me put it, in the I and you perspective. The I to me means innovate, the U stands for upscale. I think it is key today to talk about the kind of innovations that the country requires. And these are innovations that are already there. And this was a very interesting map that was presented in the presentation, uh, the, the CEO dashboard that was shown, where the innovations across the country have been tagged. But how do we bring these innovations to the mainstream? How do we bring the kind of funding that is required? How do we integrate it with not only policy, but the execution of the policy with the private sector completely owning it and leading the way? And last but not least, how do we link the consumer, the institutional consumer and the individual consumer with this entire action that needs to be taken in terms of cooling? The India Cooling Action Plan was flagged off two, three years ago, and very detailed work has been initiated. Already, the report for cooling in buildings has been taken up. We just had a meeting to discuss the cooling in the supply chain side. Much more needs to be done in terms of our commitments towards the phasing out and phasing down of HFC and HCFC. But these cannot remain as commitments that we make and don't match it with actions on the ground. So the time has come for all of us to treat this crisis as an opportunity. This is an opportunity for us to converge our efforts. Therefore, how the policy making needs to be implement, implemented on the ground is something which we need the private sector to keep coming back to us and telling us. We need organizations like CEW to flag the overarching concerns. It was very interesting to see that while we are talking about the replacement to the HFC and HCFC, it is also very important that the skill to manage these kind of flammable and toxic materials is also built up. So the challenge lies not only in looking at the alternatives, not only in having buildings, whether they are commercial buildings, residential complexes, airports or metro stations, the challenge is also in skilling the people to be able to manage this kind of technology change. And therefore, here the crisis becomes an opportunity because there's a huge, huge opportunity to skill and to employ people in these changed circumstances. Therefore, if we look at the whole picture in totality and we align our goals under the cooling action plan with the larger goals that we are already committed towards as part of our COP26 announcements, the whole question would be settled simply because we would have an integrated approach. The question is not only about the emissions intensity, about less dependence on fossil fuel-based energy, but it is also about aligning the cooling activities that we need to do in a parallel manner. When we talk about the cooling demands, it is not just the human comfort angle that is connected with it. It is the supply chain, the movement of perishable commodities, food commodities, drugs, across the country in the most efficient manner. And here then the connection with a sustainable transport chain is, is interlinked in such a way that we cannot ignore this aspect of the, of the action that needs to be taken. So the whole approach has to be one which links technology with finance and with the different policy level buckets that are required. And at the end of the day, the implementation which lies 
not just with the union government, with the state governments, the municipal bodies and the different bodies that are managing the various complexes across the country. All of them have to be integrated and all of them have to find a place in the stakeholder discussions and their concerns need to be addressed as well. So I would like to simply flag these issues as you go on towards the deliberations of the day. And I am sure that at the end of the discussions, some very concrete plan of action would emerge, which we would be able to integrate into the other elements of the cooling action plan and not only integrate them into the plan, but also make sure that the different strategies that are being evolved by the ministries, so the transport ministry comprising the road and transport, uh, road highways and the railways and the civil aviation, all of them take into account the recommendations and the need to factor in the cooling uh, principles into their strategies. We will need to integrate it with uh, housing and urban affairs because they are playing a critical role in shaping our cities, in deciding and, and uh, in consultation with the stakeholders in, in working out the building code and energy efficient codes for buildings. So therefore, all of these dialogues cannot happen separately in silos, in verticals. They have to be integrated into the entire plan of action. And I'm sure that will emerge very clearly from the discussions. Thank you very much for this participation and I look forward to the recommendations. Thank you.